What is it? Well, of course, it's a volcano. You've seen pictures and films of volcanoes before. And this is lava, molten rock, flowing down the side of the volcano. But why do volcanoes form? Well, let's go back to the Earth, first of all, and ask what that's like inside. A long time ago, people thought that the Earth was like a giant rubber ball, hollow inside. And, of course, they were quite wrong. It isn't like that. And then, for a long time, people thought that the Earth was a bit like a, a big squishy orange, very ripe and solid on the outside, but quite runny and liquid on the inside, with that molten rock just waiting to find a weak spot on the Earth's surface to ooze out. Wrong again. In fact, geologists today are pretty sure that most of the Earth inside is solid, but there are little patches where you have molten rock. You see, the Earth is thought to consist of big plates of rock Space like that and moving very slowly. Rub your hands together. What do you notice? They get warm. When those rocks, plates of rock, move past one another and under one another, they form a lot of heat, enough heat to melt rock. So you get pockets of molten rock or magma forming below the Earth's surface. And if that comes up to the surface, you have a volcano. Well, let's go to Mount Gambia. This is an extinct volcano in South Australia. In fact, the crater is now a beautiful lake, the Blue Lake. But from the side of Mount Gambia, this piece of rock was found. Strange looking piece of rock, isn't it? Well, it doesn't look very liquid or molten now, but it was at one time. Watch what happens if I squeeze some toothpaste out onto a piece of cardboard. Right, you get interesting patterns forming as it flows. And if you look at this rock, which is basalt from Mount Gambia, you'll see flow marks. And you can imagine that that was once molten. You can also see lots of little bubbles because gas was present in that rock and it's solidified, you've got bubbles, lots of air there, and in fact it's quite light now. Well, there are lots of other kinds of rocks that come from volcanoes as well. This one is called andesite, and this is from Vanuatu. And if you have a look at that, you can see bubbles once again, and also crystals. Those crystals formed when it cooled very slowly. Here's another piece of volcanic rock. Looks almost like glass, doesn't it? In fact, it's sometimes called volcanic glass or obsidian. That's from Rotorua in New Zealand. Now imagine you're flying over the Flinders Ranges in central Australia. You might see this near Arcarula, a large outcrop of rock that's been pushed up. That's volcanic rock. It was once surrounded by softer rock, which has now been weathered away, leaving just the big piece of volcanic rock, and it now has trees growing on top of it. Well, one volcano that I'm sure you've heard of is Mount St. Helens in Washington State in the United States of America. That erupted and blew away half the side of the mountain. It was a very tragic eruption. Many people were killed. And also enormous amounts of ash and dust were formed. And in fact, these blew right across the whole country. Although this is on the west coast of the United States, some of the dust was found all the way across on the east coast. And I have some of that Mount St. Helens volcanic ash here. Have a look at that. This was collected right near the volcano itself. Very fine, very grey and powdery. That's the dust that blew all across the country. Well, that's a little bit about volcanoes and some of the rocks that come from volcanoes. Let's have a look now at a model volcano. This little heap of bright orange chemicals consists of crystals of ammonium dichromate. Very dangerous, very poisonous but perhaps you can persuade your science teacher to do this experiment for you at school. I'm doing it on a solid asbestos base because it produces a lot of heat. This is not found in volcanoes, but it looks a bit like a volcano when you ignite it. Have a look at this.